Hello everybody and welcome to the chaotic little book corner slash Amanda's channel. This is another reading vlog we are doing as a buddy read. This is a book that I have been trying to get Amanda to read for ages and it is finally happening. I have reread this book maybe four times and it is another reread and I am so excited. So what we are going to be reading is White is Bewitching by Helen Oyemi. I love this book. I think it is one of the best books I've ever read depicting an eating disorder. I think it is one of the creepiest books I've read in a really long time. It's so fun and so dark and I just am super excited to get back into that world. It's super like I'm just ecstatic. I hope you guys are ready. You will get to see us dissect this book and there will be spoilers. I will warn you of that. There will be spoilers in this vlog. We will do a non-spoilery book review. She'll do one on her channel. I've done one on mine several times but I'll at least talk about it in my wrap-up and I won't spoil it there. I don't know if we're gonna do another Zoom meeting where we discuss the book in detail like we did East of the Bell Jar but in this scenario we're gonna just play it by ear but this should be really exciting but come along with us on this spooky read and let's get some fall vibes going hello fellow cyborgs and those of the chaotic little book corner so i wanted to update you on white is for witching by helen oyemi which i am buddy reading with acacia and we're doing a reading vlog that's going to be full of spoilers i just got to page like 52 and i definitely don't love Oyoyemi's writing style. For me, it just tips a little bit over the too literary for my taste, too experimental for my taste line than what I'm liking these days specifically. I'm also finding the multiple perspectives in which this story is told. The first chapter we have an I don't know who this character is, but named Orr, who speaks. Then we have Elliot, who's Miranda's twin brother. And then we have 29 Barton Road, I think is the house's address. So the house is speaking as well. I still have no idea who Orr is. I assume it will matter eventually or it won't. And then it, my questions will be answered. And I'm finding it overall fairly easy to tell when the house is narrating versus when Elliot's narrating. But I'm also really surprised that Elliot's one of our main narrators because the back of the book makes him seem like a very inconsequential character and only the women of the story really matter. So I was kind of surprised to see how much speaking time or thinking time, perspective time, he gets at least at the beginning. I'm enjoying the spooky vibes of it. I'm enjoying the representation of Miranda's eating disorder of pica. And I'm finding that compared to some of the other Oyayamis that I've read, I've read Mr. Fox and Gingerbread, that this seems to be easier for me to follow than what I remember of those two. But I think overall for Oyayami, I get the impression when I start one of her books that she's written really cool characters in her mind and then finds a story to put them in. I don't have as much faith in her plotting and the story she's going to tell as I do some other authors. It seems she's interested in things other than plot. And for the most part with my reading, I definitely need there to be a plot to kind of anchor my expectations and anchor the action forward in a book. So we'll see how I continue to get on with this. I'm enjoying it so far, probably at like a three star level. So we'll see how it goes as hopefully the spooky and horror elements develop more. And maybe I figure out who this or person thing is. Happy Halloween. Amanda, I am so bummed that you're not enjoying this. Helen Yemi has a very specific right style and if you don't like it it doesn't work. I remember the first time I read it and it felt really cryptic to me as well and I felt disconnected and unsure of the whole thing and I ended up finding that I liked it best upon my second reread. It took me a while to get into it but I liked it a lot the first time and then I loved it the second time. Honestly, or is not that important. It's a narrator, but it's not that important. We're kind of stuck in a situation where we know that something is wrong with the house and something is wrong with 
the family and there's a dark secret and we don't know exactly what that secret is yet. You do know about Miranda's pica, which is really interesting and flows through the entire novel. There's just a lot that we haven't gotten to yet. So I won't spoil anything, but honestly, I'm feeling like it's a hard first start and it's a difficult one to get into. So please just stick with it and see how you feel. Let me know what you're thinking. Happy Halloween! So I have read up to chapter, not chapter, <laughs> there are no chapters, page 175 at this point. So you've definitely met Orr, who I think is probably the character that I'm most intrigued with right now, actually. I'm kind of bummed that you said that she doesn't really matter all that much because I was finding the conversations about like her being a black adopted child to white parents and what does she owe her heritage, what do her white adoptive parents owe to teaching her about her culture and kind of trying to, I mean I think that that's a really interesting idea. And I think one of the main gripes for me with Yem Oyoyemi's writing style, at least in this book, is that it seems like she's approaching interesting ideas but she only just approaches them and then she leaves the reader to do the work to try to fully form an idea around what she's approaching. The other thing that I'm still struggling with is I feel like we're kept at arm's length from our characters. Even Miranda and Elliot, just how their family functions, they don't seem to be very invested in one another. Part of that could be that they're still trying to deal with the grief over the loss of Lily. Part of that is Miranda just came back from being in a mental institution. They are not quite sure how to navigate their ideas of her and her needs. So, but I think that it goes more than that. It's actually been really refreshing to see Miranda from an outsider's viewpoint, like Or and Tihana is how I'm pronouncing that other character's name, view her at university and seeing how strangely she's acting and how she's just kind of in the periphery because she almost seems to be in the periphery of her own story. And we've also had the reveal that the house seems to have been sentient before Anna Good kind of became the catalyst for it, but when Anna Good's husband was killed in World War II, she displaced her grief or her grief manifested in racism. So the house is racist and the house is very protective of the women, except for, you know, it was, I suppose you could say kind of protective of Jennifer, but trapping her in the house, I don't think was a benevolent thing. So I'm kind of a little bit you know, still confused about a lot of things, specifically the house's function. Is it loyalty to these women? Does it want to destroy these women? Does it want to consume these women? I'm not sure and I'm not sure that we'll ever know. I think maybe saying that or doesn't matter is not exactly right. If you're looking at a summary of the plot, Orr's story is very secondary. I think that's really the best way to explain it. I have a lot of mixed feelings about the house. I've had a lot of mixed feelings about the house for a very long time. I don't think I've ever fully decided what I think of the house in general. I've felt mixed about it for the entire time that I've read it, or every time I've read it. The trapping her in the house was love and hate in and of itself. Like, it was a mix. It was, it was definitely not clear in terms of the choices. So, I don't know. In general, I just, I feel like this whole thing is... It's so hard to decipher, especially because Oyemi doesn't write in clear statements at all. And that's probably part of the issue, is she doesn't give clear identities. I am on page 210, so once you catch up, I will talk more about that. I'm going to take a break from it, though, for 24 hours, and I'm going to read... Sylvia Plath's memoir or biography I should say so um, I will talk more to you about that very soon so I'm at page 210 and we have learned now about Miranda's relationship with Orr that Miranda is being possessed because we had that one scene where she attacked Orr and then seemed to wake up and behave normally after that and we further know how racist the house is and how it's trying to get Sade or Sade or Sadie to leave the house by like electrical shocks and just making it as unwelcome as possible. 
I think the thing that I'm still struggling with the most with this book is not connecting with Miranda and having her feel very unknowable, at a distance. I'm having a very hard time just thinking that she could be an actual person. It's how she speaks and how she interacts with people. She seems very otherworldly, but in an inconsistent way. And I think that's mainly what I'm struggling with with this to connect with. And it's also very, I think it's interesting that Elliot went away to South Africa, which is well known for its overt racism with the apartheid and how that kind of links into, you know, maybe the house and its inhabitants aren't quite what they seem are kind of actually quite racist. And just the like the lack of compassion that her family seems to show for her and lack of understanding of her eating disorder her father taking her out to dinner even though food is triggering for her and not realizing that she ate more than she ever has in front of him in recent times but just notice the food left on the plate and you would think that he might think to take her somewhere else so this lack of human connection i find is just really holding me at a distance with this reading experience. And I also find that though the story has picked up momentum and is more linear and easier to follow now that Miranda's no longer in the house, now that Miranda's no longer in the house, there are less creepy things and things are not making sense. We're not getting more pieces of the puzzle in regards to the house. So in ways, it also feels like the plot or the mystery has kind of stopped being pursued. So this is classic Oyemi. Honestly, I don't think I've read a single book of hers where I felt the characters were right where I wanted them to be in terms of like feelings. However, all of them have these issues, these mental issues that are just so intensely real. And I feel for me, if they were any more prevalent and like up in your face I would lose my mind because they're so raw and they're just so detailed and so intense and I just don't think that being up in front with those feelings is easy so that to me is a good thing that they're a little reserved. I think that the racism is really clear at this point in the book and I think that the the trauma of this system and this and this house is really prevalent and i think that the overall fear and anxiety that comes with this house is really prevalent even though miranda's no longer in it i think it's really true and valuable to think about this and i also think the moment where she harms or is so important or is not the important part it's her moment where she is not herself that's so important and I guess you could say it's possession or you could say it's dissociation whichever one you go with I think it works I feel so strongly that Miranda is just such a valuable character to relay eating disorders if that makes sense like I think she's so tangible with that but I could be you know, I could read it completely differently than you do, but it just, for me, it's very important. So this is why reading books with buddies is so important, because just in that simple scene where Miranda attacks Orr, I assumed that Miranda was being possessed by the house, whereas you are reading this more from a mental health standpoint or a mental illness standpoint, and you read of it at dissociation, which makes me feel like a scumbag. I know, I hope it didn't offend you. I don't think that you took it that way. But the idea of conflating possession with dissociation is just very, a very dangerous thing. So obviously I was coming at this from mostly like a horror supernatural sort of standpoint, 
with elements of mental illness thrown in and family trauma that Kitty is going to join. Whereas you're coming at it more from like a realist perspective and looking at the haunting aspects as maybe like metaphor, do you read it as one or the other or do you kind of combine, hello, jeez Louise, or do you kind of combine the two? Are you reading it metaphorically but then also like this house is evil and this is just the fact of the story? You know, it was interesting. I was recently editing some of the, cat, cat, find something. I was editing some of the clips that I had, um, sent and I said that there was like no evidence of Miranda and Elliot's connection to one another but then when you realize that Elliot didn't actually go to South Africa and instead he spent the entire semester stalking his sister so it's just that their attachment is just very wrong and it makes me wonder just how wrong the attachment truly is. At the beginning of the story, there's that reference to, oh, whenever you have twin siblings, people just kind of like assume there's like a romantic or sexual nature to your relationship. And it was just a throwaway line that was never brought up again. But now I'm thinking that, oh, <laughs> mm. you know, like, so how, how much is Oyeyemi not telling us? How much is she dropping one breadcrumb and then assuming we're going to pick it up and fully examine it? I definitely want to hear more about what, like how do you interpret this? Do you interpret it as entirely metaphor? What genre is this for you? Is it literary fiction? Is it horror? I think I wanted this to be more horror than it wanted to be. And, and I do think that Oyeyemi is too cerebral for me. I think at this point in my reading experience, I don't want to have to work so much at deciphering what's actually going on in a story. I want it more to be there and for me to pick up extra details as I continue reading as opposed to a book needs to be read multiple times for me to understand what's going on on a basic level. So at this point I finished the novel, but there are still definitely some things that I think we need to unpack a little bit and chat about. So I'm looking forward to those discussions. Hey, okay, I know it's been a while. I got really sick and everything kind of fell to the wayside, but listen, you didn't offend me with the dissociation comment. I read this book as mental health with a trickling of horror. Um, and horror being a reference more so than a fact. It's one of the reasons it's a favorite for me because the idea of dissociation and uh, loss of time and loss of control is just so prevalent and I just think it's so realistic and so honest. Really interesting. And then the siblings having a romantic relationship, I read it that way the second time I read it and it made the story make a lot more sense. That is how I feel. I definitely think that this book is totally just it's an amazing book and I love it and there's so many different ways to read it I don't think there's one way to read it I don't think there's a right way to read it I think that you can read it any way you want and it's gonna be fine so yeah thank you so much for watching our vlog I hope you enjoyed it from me and Amanda send you all my love I will talk to you all in the next video and we'll see you soon bye